Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. I'm trying out a new project today. So if you wanna see how to make an apron like this, please stay tuned. So I have a little bit of nervous excitement about today's project because I am going to try to make an apron. I haven't sewn garments in years and years and years, um, but I wanted to try this because I had this pattern that I purchased uh, a while ago, probably years ago, and I finally have some, um, some fabric that I think would be okay. The reason that I and that I got the idea was because one of um, one of the comments on my channel suggested that I take some of that upholstery fabric that I got in my latest uh, free fabric haul and make some aprons or make an apron. Um, but as I looked through the fabric today, I just didn't want to use that. So I pulled some different fabric from that haul and I'm going to put a link to that haul um, in the video below. So that in the description so that you can um, go check that out if you haven't seen it. Um, we're going to get a little bit closer to this pattern piece in a minute, but I do want to tell you a little bit about it. It is Butterick B4087. And when I picked it years ago, it was because I liked the vintage look of these um, patterns or these aprons. And I'm going to choose one of them. I'm choosing... Um, apron A, which is down here, and we'll look a little bit closer at it. Um, a lot of these have some good uh, ruffles and rick rack and scalloped edges and all that, but I'm not really into that. So uh, apron A is, it seems to be the simplest. So that's what I'm going to go with. I've also pulled um, some fabric out. So for my, for the larger piece, I'm going to use this, um, this fabric with all of these crazy designs and colors. And then for my contrast, I'm gonna use the black. So let's zoom in a little bit more on this, um, on the pattern. And then I'll go over a few things that I'm learning about, um, about reading the pattern as we go. I want to get a little zoom action on the pattern so that you can see um, the piece, the part that I'm gonna make. So here's the apron that I'm gonna make. I'm trying to make sure it's good on the camera. This is it, and it doesn't have a top, so this is just the skirt part of the apron. And you can see it's very simple. It has simple lines. Some of these other ones are not as simple. That's the back of the um, the big one right there. But I, this is the one that, that we're going to work on today. Um, and I hadn't read a pattern. I don't know if I've ever actually read an entire pattern because when I was sewing garments, I just kind of did whatever I had seen my mom do. Um, but I think that this is very interesting. If you look at the pattern, you're gonna see all the different views here, and then all of the pattern pieces here, and then what they are in the, um, in the various um, views of the, um, of the apron. And this pattern actually has 28 pieces down here, but I'm only going to use, since I'm doing view A, I'm only using the first five of those pieces. And the reason that my pattern is so puffy is because I put all the rest of the pieces back in there and I just folded them the best that I could. Um, there are some special cutting instructions. I won't zoom in super close on that. Um, but they give some interesting things about um, the thickness of the fabric, if it should be a single thickness or if it should have a fold or whatever. And what I like about this, and I wish I had known this when I was sewing garments because it would have made it so much easier, is that it has for each piece here, it shows how to lay it out on the, on the fabric. So I'm really excited about that because that's actually going to be my um, first step, which is laying out these pieces and cutting them. Um, you'll notice that some of the pattern pieces are right side up, some of them are right side down, and I would just check at the very top to see what's what, to see where to put them. The fabric always seems to go right side, no, this fabric goes wrong side out, and so I'm gonna take a close look at that as well. So let me get the, the um, pattern pieces laid out 
and then I'll um, I'll show them. I have all of the pieces here cut out and I'm going to go ahead and get started. The directions I think are really pretty good. This apron, um, supposedly it's very simple. Like there's only like seven steps. So hopefully, well, maybe nine steps. Hopefully I can get it done, um, today so that I can share it with you. Now, one cool thing about this pattern is that it does call for bias tape and it says, um, double fold bias tape and so I've already made some of that I made this is for my black and then so that it contrasts and then I have some regular black somewhere to go around my other fabric and for this first step that's actually um, what I have to do is put that bias tape on the front pocket before I do that I am going to press a stitch line because there's a stitch line on the pattern the stitch line is on the fold and so I could have um, drawn it in but I'm actually going to press it here before I put the bias tape on so that when it's time for me to stitch this down on the next piece I can do that and I'll have my um, my stitch line I am using black thread I am going to switch to my open toe foot instead of my patchwork foot. I don't know that that matters that much, but I, that's what I'm going to do so that I can get some, um, so that I can see where I'm stitching. All right, so we're going to start with the um, putting the bias tape on here, and when we when I show. The video I am going to actually speed this section up so that it won't take up too much time on the video so we're starting here by putting on some bias tape and we're going to speed up the video here with my um with my bind or bias tape on there and then it says that I need to pin the wrong side of this to the right side of this I'm gonna turn it make this the right side and then it says I need to match the small circles and I didn't see any small circles on piece one so I'm just gonna put the top of this with the small circles. And it says to pin it in place. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna pin or just try my wonder clips. Um, maybe I'll just put a few pins in here. And then because the main thing is to stitch down this center seam that I already pressed. So, wait, let me see. Let me double check. It says baste raw edges together. That's what it says. So, maybe I'll baste the raw edges. And that's with a larger um, seam than what I would normally do. Because it says to baste it and then stitch the stitching line. So... I really, I'm going to try and follow these directions because I don't know what I'm doing and I assume that Butterick knows what they're doing better than I do. So let's do a quick. And I think that when my mom, when I saw her sewing, I don't think that she did 
every single step but I think that she could kind of get away with it because she had been sewing for longer than me so I'm just gonna try it out and see what it says I'll speed up here so you can see the basting and then the um, and then the steaming the seam the middle stitch line Let's see. Um, to base the pocket to the apron and then I'm going to put some black bias tape around the outside edge. Now the bias tape thing it looks really good but it does take a while because I'm using my I'm using my wonder clips to um, to get everything together and I probably could have done all this at the beginning like done all the bias tape but the pattern goes in a certain order so I want to respect that because I know that it's not for no reason. I know that they have it the way they have it for a reason. So, um, basting and then bias tape. The, um, the pocket basted onto the front of the apron. And then I have my bias tape going all around the edge of the apron part. You can see the contrast there. Um, now the pattern is telling me that I need to gather the top edge of this apron. So what that means is, according to the pattern, it means that I have to stitch on the seam allowance and then stitch one eighth inside of the seam allowance, seam allowance and then pull the, th the threads. I'm a little nervous about that, but I'm going to go ahead and, and give it a try. Um, I won't show it on camera like the basting, but I will show the... Um, I'll show you what it looks like after I've gathered it. Hopefully I can do so this. I tried the gathering thing with the... Um, with the two rows of threads but my thread broke and so it didn't really do what I thought it was gonna do but the pattern calls for me to add the waistband now and so on one side I've already pressed it under um, the 5 8 inch seam allowance and then I've pinned it to the um, the apron and I'm just kind of I kind of pinned in my gathers I hope that works I'm going to stitch this down on a 5 8 inch seam the last line. little uh, bit of the apron and that is making the straps. I've already made one and here's what it consists of. So what the pattern told me to do is to press under a about a half inch and then to fold that half inch that you press under again to create a finished edge. They call it, um, I think they call it making a narrow hem. Let me let me check and see what they call it. Make sure. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, it says make a one half inch narrow hem on the sides of the um, the tie ends. And then I had to go and look in the glossary to figure out what the narrow hem was. So I've already done it for this one, and I've stitched it. And then it says to fold in the fullness at the corners. So for this corner, I'm just going to kind of tuck it in like that and then fold it under again. So I, I have to kind of play with that a little bit, but I did it on this one. It's not perfectly pointed, but it'll do. Okay. The other thing that I had to do was add some tucks. I don't, I don't even know if you can see that on camera where I had to tuck the fabric in a little bit. The seam allowances are back there, and they're pressed up toward the top of the um, the top of the tie strap. So I am going to finish this up, and then I think I'll show how to attach it to the um, the apron. And then there's I only like my, three my uh, tie straps here, and I've already attached them to the waistband. The pattern said to put the wrong side of the pat of the uh, tie on the right side of the waistband and then to line up the marks on the end and I did that and I pinned it and now I've basted it already you might be able to see those little basting stitches right there and my next step there's only three things that are left to do well two things really the first thing is that it says to 
fold on the fold line. I'm guessing the fold line is right in the middle here. Like that. And then I'm going to stitch uh, my 5 8 inch seam allowance on this side. I'm going to do that on both of them. Then I'm going to flip the uh, waistband over and um, and then I can top stitch and edge stitch. And hopefully I will have a finished apron. So I want to do that on camera. I will speed it up. Um, I'm a little nervous because I've never done this before, but I think it's going to be fine. Um, what I'm nervous about is I'm hoping that these will turn and be right side out. I'm afraid that they're going to be the wrong side out. But again, I trust the pattern. They know what they're talking about. So I'm going to speed up the video here. <music> about the um, the turning of this and it, that it wouldn't end up on the the right side but it did I have a little bit of overhang here um, that I'm not that crazy about but it's all right I mean I'm not gonna take it out for that um, so I really like that there was one other thing that I just wanted to show this I don't know I I don't feel like it's the best way to do it but I'm glad that I don't have any overhang um, with the gathers but when I did my final stitch there's just a little bit you can see the stitching on the back of the apron but no matter I just I like the way it turned out again this is Butterick pattern B4087 they have um, one two three four they have five vintage style um, aprons and now that I've made one I might try another one because it wasn't that hard um, I'm happy with my fabric selection. I'm happy that I learned some new skills, adding this bias tape for a, a finished look. Um, gathering, even though my gathering wasn't successful, I learned that. Um, and then doing this narrow hem. So a lot of um, new things to try that I was really, I'm really excited that I went ahead and, and gave it a go. Um, this one probably... I'm trying to think how long it took to make it because I had to like run some errands and so I was back and forth and then last night I was tired so I finished it up today. So I'm not sure how long it took me um, to make it but I think in one sitting it could be done easily. I just didn't have one sitting that I could take to do it. I'm going to take some pictures um, in the apron so you can see what it looks like but for now um, I just wanted to show you if you have any questions about this process leave them in the comments below um, Thumbs up this video share it with your friends subscribe if you haven't already And even if you have subscribed hit that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when I make a new video Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye